this is part two here. So let's save this as, just because we can, let's save this as version two. It's a good habit to get into, guys, as you're developing concepts and ideas to constantly save your file as something else. File, save as, command, shift, s for Macintosh, control, shift, s for Windows. So let's finish building the rest of this. So the footer tag, footer tag has a tag, but the footer tag doesn't have a rule. We're going to select the tag. In order to affect, we need to select. Okay, once you understand my philosophy of how I teach, I get you to think the way the software thinks. This way it's very comprehensible. Comprehensive, I should say. And it's much more enjoyable as the learning process goes because you're starting to think what the software expects from you. That's why my students are very successful. From my training studio in New York City, where I've been teaching for the past 25 years, I don't use software production techniques, real world production techniques. So let's select the tag, make a rule. So footer, now footer technically doesn't have to exist with content, but a footer has to physically be there as a tag if you want the wrapper to wrap the entire section. Now a footer would typically be a little bit smaller typeface. I'm gonna make this 12 pixels, okay? I'm going to change this to white type. Now, a little technique here if you haven't seen this before. I want the footer content to vertically be in the center, top and bottom, up and down, up, left and right too, left and right alignment, I can do under category, block, block category, text align to the center, okay? But what I want to do is vertically align this top and bottom, so what I do is I make my line height whatever size I want my box height to be. Very important step here, the box height. So if you want box height to be 40 pixels, don't change it here, because then you have to play games with padding. Make the line height. This works for a single line of type. So we're gonna make her line height 40 pixels high. And just because we can, we're gonna go to category background, make our background, let's make it this orange color, okay? Now, very important step here. If I hit the apply option, well, it's not gonna work because footer is taking up this entire section here because footer does understand that the nav is there and the section's there and the side's there. So what do these tags have that footer doesn't have? These tags have floats. Footer can't see float because it's just like a, imagine take a piece of paper put it on the top of your head. You can't see it, it's right there, but it's floating above you. So the footer can't see it, okay? What has to happen based on these choices, these choices box category, footer needs to clear those floats. It needs to clear the left float and the right float. So based on these choices, these choices, I need to clear both. So if I hit the apply option now, footer goes at the bottom. Perfectly done, okay? So there's my content, there's my information. Now, I'm using a free extension called Lorem and More. It's a perfect extension for putting in content. So this way you don't have to sit there and type information. You don't have to go to the web and copy and paste. You can get this free at adobe.com, the Dreamweaver Exchange. Go to, go to the Dreamweaver Exchange website on the adobe.com website and get Lorem and More. So here's how that works here. I'm gonna double click article. I'm gonna come up here to insert. I'm going to insert more and more. So based on these choices here, we could put Cyrano Divergiac speech. We could put some more Ibsen Greek. We could put some corporate mumbo jumbo. We could put Shakespeare. We're just going to pop four or five simple paragraphs of Warm Ibsen typeface. And we hit OK. Now, this is a good hack to get into, by the way, because from a design standpoint, you don't want your clients reading the words at this point. You're still trying to design the site. So this is in Latin. Since most people don't speak Latin, it's a good thing to do. Now let's make this header tag. Let's make the second tag a header by hitting Command Key 1. Now we can do it that way or go down here to Header. Command Key 1 through Command Key 6 is Header 1 through Header 6. Okay. Windows is Control 1 through Control 6. Let's do the same thing with the Article tag. Command Key 1. Now, important step here, guys. The first tag of each section, with the exception of nav tag for search engine results optimization for best results, should be a header tag, followed by an H2 tag, if in fact that's important to you. So as an example, 
if this is going to be my logo, I could do something like this. I'm going to select the tag and make it header one. So I'm going to type in Okay, now for a catchphrase, I'm going to return key and make that header two. So let's do learn to think the way the software thinks. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, so let's make that header two. Okay, so for search engine results, for search engine optimization, this is a header tag, H1 tag, this is an H2 tag. So I could make this what's called an H group tag, which is good for search engines, but it's part of the new HTML5 tag structure. So how do I do that? I select what I want to affect. In order to affect the tags, I need to select the tag content. Then Command T and type in wrap Command T, Control T, wrap tag in H group, at group. Now, there's no rule for this, but you could make a rule for it. We're not going to make a rule for I just want to keep this simple. The purpose of these next series of videos is server-side include, which we'll get to in just a second. Okay, now the nav section here, we're just going to do basic navigation. So we're going to do about. Now what I would typically do is put a placeholder for that, an HTML5 placeholder by simply coming down here to the property palette and put it in the pound symbol. Hit the return key. Okay, that's how I set this up by default. Then I can just double click copy, hit the return key, paste, return key, paste, return key, paste. So this is going to be called double click products. Now notice incidentally, I'm doing lowercase. If you want to stylize it, that's what the CSS style panel is for. Price and contact. Now, previous every single video we've done so far, or I shared with you, this has to be part of an unordered list. So how do I do that? In order to affect the content, we need to select the content. The content's not selected, therefore the content can be affected. Okay, we're gonna go right down here to our property palette and make this an unordered list. Okay, make a change, save a change. Good have to get into. Now, the same thing with the aside tag over here. Let's put some content. Let's make that header one, command key one, makes it header one, hit the return key. And just because we can here, let's go to again, insert, warm, and more. Again, free extension, adobe.com. Just go to the exchange and type in warm and more, download the extension and install it. So we'll just put here some uh, Shakespeare in the aside tag. So we're gonna put two paragraphs of Shakespeare inside the aside tag. It's just we have some kind of content to work with. Okay, I'm not being a snob. Okay, make a change, save a change. Okay, now in our next video, we're going to share with you how, first of all, we're gonna stylize these HTML5, I'm sorry, we're gonna stylize these anchor tags and then we're gonna do server-side include and show you the benefits of using server-side include your website. So talk to you in a second.